You are watching With a Cup of Tea, the High Plains Book Awards edition, a production of This House of Books, an independent bookstore cooperative and tea shop in downtown Billings, Montana. Now here's our show. Okay, well, welcome to This House of Books, and today we have with us Sue Farrell Holler, uh, uh, one of the finalists for High Plains Book Fest, and she's joining us from Grand Prairie, Canada, Alberta. So, welcome, Sue. Thank you very much. I'm pleased to be here. Yeah, delighted. Um, let's uh, let's start just talking a little bit about you. So, uh, tell us about yourself. Hmm. Not that very interesting a person. <laughs> Um, I'm a writer who's based in Grand Prairie, Alberta, which is a small city in the northwest of the province. And I'm one of those strange creatures that is fairly versatile and I write just about anything at any time. Uh, for instance, right now I have a story that's on a beer can. I have a visual poem that is on a 12 foot wall in a public art gallery. I'm currently working on live streaming a series of original humor stories for adults that are based on my first year in the Northwest Territories. And I have a picture book coming out this fall. So there's always seems to be something that really uh, twigs me and I just have to write it. And sometimes it's for children and sometimes it's not. But it's the work for children that I love the best. You have you have several books up for children, and I I've been looking at them. They just sound charming. I just you know your first one. What was it? Mama going with Mama to the post office is that to it? The post office. Yes. I, I love the premise. I just think it's terrific. Yeah. But thank you, you have a, you have you have one now for for young adults. I think is that right? Yes, that's right. And this is my first young adult title. Mm -hmm. uh, very very interesting. I never ever thought I would write for young adults. It was never something that was in my mind, but it happened. So tell us about the book. So it's based on the true story of a child refugee from Ethiopia who is smuggled into Canada. Uh, very emotional story, um, very action-packed, and it's one of those stories that appeals not just to teenagers, but an awful lot of adults are reading it as well, and really finding that they're learning about a culture and um, just situations that they've never ever thought of. A lot of times we don't really think about people's stories and what is behind them and, and maybe how they act or, or, or the way they are, that it's really a culmination of a lot of other things. So it's also creating a lot of empathy, which is just, you know, does my heart good. Mm -hmm. So what's the name of your, uh, your main character? Desfaya. Desfaya, uh, okay. Correct. And it's not, that's not his real name. It is based on a true story, but it became apparent uh, that we needed to protect his identity. Uh, there, he does still have family that's in Ethiopia and the political situation there is often unstable. There's a really great uh, president there now and, uh, or prime minister, <laughs> he's a prime minister. Um, but the, you just never know which way things are going to go. So uh, it just became really important for his safety, not so much for his safety, but for the safety of his family, that we make some changes in order to protect his identity. Well, as I understand it, the, the story, uh, he, he winds up in Calgary in the yes. winter, and he's left to his own resources just to survive. That's correct. Yes. This story, um, it, it's so appealing because it, it, it's just so full of drama. Um, he wasn't actually in the winter. He was actually in spring. And there is that scene, there is snow on the ground, but of course it's Calgary and the elevation is quite high and there's snow any time of the year. But it's, it's sort of the whole shock factor and perhaps for emotional impact, that is one of the that's actually a really crucial scene because you have someone coming here. He's uh, 
14 or 15. We're not even really sure how old he was. And he has nothing. He has no money. Um, he has very little English. He doesn't know where he is. Um, he's in a total culture shock. He was on a bus. He was on a Greyhound bus and he came across the country. Uh, he doesn't know if he's awake or if he's dreaming. Um, there are so many things going on. And then for this kid to, to survive, he has always had someone picking him up and looking after him. And suddenly he doesn't. And it, the fear is just so real um, in him in those moments that I always say to kids, I said, what would you do? How, how would, what would be the next step that you would take? And it's quite interesting because most people would just freeze, <laughs> not, not literally, but, you know, figuratively just freeze up and, you know, crawl in a hole maybe and hope for the best. So. I, I understand that completely. I, I uh, spent a little time in Calgary myself and it's, uh, it can be challenging, <laughs> very challenging. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, uh, so it, I, my next prompt actually would just to be to find out a little bit more about how you see the audience for the book. Uh, mm -hmm. Who would like so this? Yeah, so this book, I really wrote it for myself because I was so fascinated by the subject. When I met this man, it, 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 I, I just was so full of questions. I just wanted to know more and more and more. And when I write, I really write to, to reach one person. If I can reach one person and make them feel something or change their mind about something or whatever, make them laugh, make them cry. When this story happened and it was you know in a full manuscript and i was even talking to an editor at that point and i i just remember saying the thing that you would never want to say to someone that you are pitching your book to i said i don't even care if this is ever published because it had already achieved what i wanted to achieve and that is to touch someone and it had touched me very deeply and it had touched him very deeply and gave him this sense of peace that he hadn't had before. And I thought it's already accomplished what a book needs to accomplish for me. So that it was published and that it is reaching more people is just such a great bonus. And when I hear from readers that I'm going to cry, <laughs> um, what, I, what I receive most often are emails from readers who want to make sure that he is okay like, did he survive like is he is he all right now and so it's really lovely to be able to assure them that he is safe and that he is completely thriving and he credits a lot of it to being able to tell his story and to see things quite differently uh, through reading it and through telling the story to me that's, that's fabulous. So you wrote it for an audience of one almost, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and it, it's written in a way that it, it can go out to young adults and, and adults who, uh, you know, I think, I think a well-written story is, is, a, is a good one for just about any age level, isn't it? And, uh, so. Yeah. yeah, there is that piece of it for sure. And uh, I know like the whole crossover business uh, between young adults and new adults and adult, it, it, it's such a fine line. And I probably read as much young adults material as I, as I do adult material, because I find it um, tends to be very fast paced. And you do still get all that character development and the emotion and that kind of thing in it. But it, it just seems to I don't know, it always has a little bit more oomph to it than, yeah. than, a lot of, than a lot of adult books where you're reading for 50 or 100 pages before anything happens. Well, uh, so it's a coming of age story with a special challenge mm -hmm. and, uh, and a lot of courage, it sounds like. And yeah, and, and it's really a story, I think people might think it's a depressing story, but it isn't at all. Um, if anything, this story is, it's full of hope and and resilience and you get to see how one person can take what little they have and really
build on that step by step. Maybe not even knowing where you're going at the time, but always putting that one foot ahead of the other and moving. And even when I'm having a bad day and I think I just can't do it, I'm just, I'm washed up, there's nothing left of me, I'm just gonna give up, I think of him. And I think of the obstacles that he faced and how step by step, he just kept moving forward, just kept moving. And, you know, it works. Yes, indeed. Well, thanks so much for joining us. I, I really appreciate it. I think it's wonderful, and it's been lovely. So, well, so. Thank you. <laughs> Have a grand day. You too. This program has been produced by This House of Books in collaboration with the High Plains Book Awards. The Book Awards were established to recognize regional authors and literary work that examines life on the High Plains. Nominations will be accepted starting in January 2021 on the website highplainsbookawards.org.